really today is about Kingston University to ensure that uh, you guys understand a real life example about how module evaluations and course evaluations are run. So bear with me for three minutes to give you a bit of an overview as far as how everything fits together, um, and then we'll go to the, the real deal. So Explorance is a company that has four global offices, one in Australia, one in Amsterdam, one in Montreal, and one in the Middle East. Um, but the key aspect here is 24-7 support, commitment to GDPR, um, expansive solutions for anything feedback. Um, so that could be in a situation where we're going to be talking about Blue today, which is a generalized survey, uh, institutional survey, module or course evaluation, um, but also 360 degree reviews and different applications when it comes to feedback all within Canvas. Now, bookending that solution are some different strategies we've done for feedback that are outside of Blue. So, the DIG, which we won't talk about today, the Data Integrity Gateway, that's to clean up the data um, because a lot of SISs or student information systems don't have appropriate data for courses or teaching assistants or different aspects when it comes to uh, student or teaching or course demographics. And on the other side, things that we won't be talking about today too, we also provide formative feedback or dynamic and social feedback in Canvas using something called Blue Pulse. This is where a teacher might say, are you following along, are you up to date? and in a pulse back and forth within Canvas using the to-dos and notifications, and there's an app that you can use. You can get quick and up-to-date feedback within the classroom. And then the last thing is something that's um, brand new, which is called BlueX, which is for generalized surveys. Um, so this might be for a researcher or a PhD. Um, it's kind of a cool um, drop and display type of feature. Um, but if you have any questions about those other solutions, we'll be honing in on Blue today um, in our example. So. We work with a number of institutions. There's more than 400 worldwide, some of which are seated in the front row. Uh, but the key aspect here is we understand international and specifically UK and Europe data requirements. Um, we're based in Canada, so luckily our Canadian Commonwealth friendship with the UK, we have the same data laws and proprietary aspects. Um, we can be hosted on site or in the cloud, it's up to you. Um, to ensure that you're meeting the data requirements and things like that. You can see some of the institutions that we work with worldwide. So within Canvas, um, again, I can show you this on screen down at the stand, but LTI integrations to fill out the forms in Canvas, um, complete control using assignments and calendars and notifications, um, but as well as the ability to increase response with things like pop-ups and potentially course encouragement or course blocking or grade blocking or different triggers with data from the student information system and uh, the Canvas environment itself. This is just an example to show the multifunctionality um, when it comes to languages and language support. So outside of the UK, we do Swedish, Norwegian, we're adding Finnish in the near future. But this is also if a student logs in based on their language preference, whether it be in Canvas or whether it be in the student information system, um, an evaluation can show in their particular preference. So that's super important for Scandinavia and different areas. And we also have Icelandic, which is nice. So this is the last slide before I hand over. Um, this is kind of the technical overview as far as Blue goes. So Blue is the feedback platform in the middle, but we're leveraging an institution's email server, we're leveraging the student information data, we're leveraging the Canvas integrations for access and different things like that, where all of the information coming in is agnostic. So why would you integrate with the student information system? Um, perhaps you want to evaluate your teaching assistants and have different questions for them as opposed to your main instructor. Um, perhaps you'd like to run a report on domestic students versus international students. Perhaps you'd like to have a breakdown of students that are at risk. All of that information, those flags, are typically going to be held in Oracle or PeopleSoft or Aleutian or SITS or Unit 4. And that data can be brought in to branch questions, ask different questions to different students, or more importantly, add more robust reporting for vice chancellors or provosts or deans or instructors to see better demographic breakdowns of the respondents themselves. So the reporting is incredibly robust and open. So I think that's it for me. The power of Blue is really that it's a malleable feedback tool, um, allowing instructors to add questions, allowing different departments to have different workflows. The more complicated the feedback requirement is, the better Blue succeeds as far as providing it. So if you have a situation where you have EMBAs and MBAs, or you have a course where there's one student and you need to keep confidentiality, if you have multiple instructors, if you have cross-listed courses, if you have anything that's going to be needed to trigger off a particular piece of data, um, perhaps you're in a situation where you want to send a graduation survey only to the students who are completing their last course. That data, again, is typically stored in some database elsewhere. 
um, it can trigger those evaluations all to run in Canvas. So that's a caffeinated <laughs> four minute overview of what we do, but really why you're here is to listen to Ted, and I'll hand it over to you. Hello, hi, so I'm just gonna go through a few slides, just say a bit about what we've done with module evaluation questionnaires and how we've used Blue and then integrated that with Canvas. So just a little bit of uh, background, so I'm from Kingston University, Southwest, uh, Southwest London. Um, I'm from our uh, Learning and Teaching Enhancement Centre and I'm Head of Technology Enhanced Learning and Strategic Projects there. So, I was asked in January 2017, uh, or at least it was an education committee, University Education Committee in December 2016, saying that made the decision to reintroduce uh, MEQs at Kingston. For four, the previous four or five years, we hadn't used them. Um, for many years, we used an optical mark reading service, paper-based survey. It was an internal service. We had our own hardware for reading them. And the university decided it'd become a bit of a tick box exercise, that students were just going through the motions. We weren't actually getting <coughs> useful information out of that, and so we ceased. And it was replaced by what we call rich conversation. It was getting the students together, the course reps and so on, having that continued dialogue. But we came to the conclusion that also wasn't giving what we needed. So the university made the decision that we had to reintroduce MEQs, and I was given the task that could we then, this was in January, could we introduce them for that term? So we went through a process, we uh, talked with Explorance um, as a one-off to start with. In the time that we got, we decided we'd just do it paper-based because um, I, I Explorance did that for us and we generated a, a questionnaire, a university uh, working group to look at that, agree, um, agree 10 questions to uh, 12 questions, uh, 10 um, uh, um, on a scale of 1 to 5 and 2 text-based questions and we, we ran it uh, paper-based. We scanned all of the paper-based, uploaded it to Blue and generated the re uh, reports and distributed them to all module leaders in the university. That, of course, wasn't sustainable. It worked, it delivered, we got the results, it won the university over. We then approached Explorance again, and over that summer, we then implemented Explorance properly within the institution um, and with a strategy of using online delivery of module evaluation questionnaires as our primary route. So, last academic year, 2017-18, we ran, uh, we ran uh, the system right across the uh, university, and that's what I want to say something um, about. So, um, we integrated it with Canvas. Initially, so at Kingston, we have, we have two teaching blocks, effectively, terms. Um, we have some modules that are uh, teaching block one only. We call them short path modules. Um, uh, we have some modules that are uh, teaching block two. And the vast majority of our modules run um, across the two uh, blocks. It gave us the advantage of, in that first teaching block, we had a relatively s a small number of modules running, something like 200 or so. So it gave us a, it gave us an, a relatively easy way in. But... What we didn't want to do, because this is the first time we wanted to use it, we did a manual, a semi-manual integration with Canvas, because we didn't want the MEQ buttons to appear across every module in the university for those students who hadn't got an MEQ coming up. We thought it would raise expectations, cause questions, that, uh, you know, uh, 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 and so on. So we manually created the links for those up to, well, it was around about 115. 150 modules and ran it during uh, um, November and um, it, it worked. So that was our sort of that was our first teaching. That's what we did to that's what we did to start with. Um, we integrated it with our, um, our authentication systems, our student information systems, but we manually uploaded MEQ release dates. So effectively, what we did with the blue system. We uploaded our students and the module data from our student information system. What we then asked each faculty to tell us 
what we did actually for every module in the university, we worked out when the appropriate time to run the MEQ was. And the university decided it should be run, our teaching weeks are 12 weeks plus a revision week, decided it was best to run it in weeks 9 and 10 over a two week period. And the reason for that was it would allow time for the analysis to be done and the feedback returned to students and it to be discussed in module before the end of the module. Because then when we'd previously done MEQs, we never closed that feedback loop. The, student, the feedback always came after the module had finished. And we had this problem of students seeing the value of it. By choosing that time and online, we were able to get the feedback back to students, have those discussions in class and online about the feedback from the MEQ survey. So we generated all the dates for all of the modules and then asked faculties to go through them and check them. And if there were any exceptions, to go in and change those dates. So we have a few modules that ran, uh, we call them block-based. They'll run over a set of weekends or intensive over a week or run on a non-standard period. So uh, we asked faculties to um, change those dates. We then took that data, uploaded it to Blue, and then Blue then released those surveys at the appropriate time automatically. So that was our approach. We did do a bit of paper. We have a lot of partner colleges working or collaborative partners working with us. And just the scale of what we were doing then, we ran their surveys on paper. This year we're doing it on we're doing it all on online. Oh, and the last thing, we agreed to what we call an orchestrated approach. And that's where we produce some training resources, uh, PowerPoints uh, for the module, module leaders. Uh, we, we ask module leaders to um, work with course reps and find in a teaching session during the two-week survey period, identify a 15-minute period where they give a brief introduction, watch a video that, we, that our students' union produce, um, and then walk out and leave the students to discuss, and if they wanted to, complete the survey there and then on their mobile, on their mobile devices. Um, so that's what we sort of call the orchestrated approach, working with the students' union, the course reps, uh, the module leaders. So that was the first teaching block. Then from January onwards, we implemented the full LTI integration with Canvas. And so what that meant was the, uh, the buttons for completing an MEQ and also accessing the MEQ report automatically placed in every module, every Canvas module across the system. And as the modules were, as the surveys were released, they automatically appeared and students clicked on that button and it would tell them whether they'd got an open MEQ to complete. Um, the system also generated um, emails to students, so all of the students, when an MEQ opened, as well as being able to access it through Canvas, they all got an email when an MEQ that they, for a module that they were taking, was scheduled to run. Um, and we also ran reminder emails, so we checked completion rates at the end of the first week. If a student hadn't completed, they got a reminder email, and they got a further reminder email. We also sent out emails from, uh, to the module leaders as well, just to remind them that their MEQs were opening, and for them to do some publicity within, within in class. Um, uh, and that was the process we went through. So over the two-week <coughs> survey period, students completed the MEQ. They could do it through their mobile device, through Canvas, on, on, a, on a PC, or by clicking on a link that they got in an email. So they got multiple routes through to doing the MEQ. And the key thing for us was... As soon as the survey window closed and it shut, um, we kept it open for 16 days. At midnight on the 16th day, the data was processed by the system and the reports were pushed back out into Canvas within three or four hours of that survey completing. And that was absolutely crucial. That quick turnaround time uh, was crucial to us. And what, what the system did was generate two reports, one for the module leader and the module team. They could access that by going into Canvas and clicking on their report uh, button within Canvas, and it would produce a report. Now, we had a lot of, we could customise that report. So with Blue, you can go into the sys admin and you can design your report. 
We designed a report that summarised the quantitative data um, and also listed all of the qualitative data to our two qualitative questions. But what we also did, we also licensed the Canvas text analytics engine. Now, we, we, we were a little bit cautious last year, so we limited the amount of analysis we did with it. So fundamentally, we just produced word clouds. So as part of the report, it produced a summary word cloud for each of our two questions, and that went into the staff, uh, into the staff report. The student report was identical to the staff report, except it excluded the qualitative data. So the students got all the quantitative data. And it was published to students at exactly the same time as it was published to staff. That was, um, and so literally, as soon as, as soon as the MEQ survey closed, within hours, the students had the survey report. What module leaders were then asked to do is read and consider that feedback, and then before the module ended, well, within the next seven days, have a feedback session in class to discuss that feedback, and also write a summary uh, report back to students on their interpretation of the analysis. And we asked staff to do that through um, through an announcement in Can we asked staff to do that through an announcement in Canvas, and most staff did that in the form of a letter to students on the module. It seemed to, seemed to work quite well. So that was the sort of process we went through. And just to show you, uh, it's just a, a screenshot of, a, of one of our modules. And you've got, uh, we've got two, uh, um, two buttons up here, MEQ, which we, you can customise that. We call them MEQ reports and my module evaluation. Students click on my module evaluation, complete the survey, Click on MEQ reports to see their reports. S student clicking on that will get the student report. A member of staff clicking on that will get the staff uh, report. Um, and we um, we got well at the end of our March period, our main survey window, we got just under sixteen thousand responses. It went up there because actually we ran the system all year round. So we had surveys running up into, into July. We were effectively running it all year round. Actually, this year we've already run, we've got MEQs running now right at the beginning of the academic year for some spanning modules that cross an academic year. So it's basically running all year. Um, we generated about 850 MEQ reports. Um, and the key thing for us was 75% of the student responses gave qualitative feedback. Uh, the year previously, when we did the paper-based survey, that was uh, well, that was less than that was around about 50%. So we had a, we had a jump uh, a, a jump in that. Um, and as I've said, uh, the reports were automatically generated, but we did put in a minimum threshold of five students. So a report was only generated if there were more than five responses from students within that within that module. What we also, though, did, um, oh, yeah, and so that's, that's just a screenshot of, uh, of um, part of a, a report which summarizes the uh, answers to the quantitative questions um, on, a, on a Likert scale of one, one to five. Um, and we presented that data in multiple ways, in tables, in graphs, plus the, plus the word cloud, which I think is on, um, on, the second, on, the second, on the second slide. But what we also did was generate aggregate reports, and the system again did that automatically. We identified those staff that would get access to the aggregate report. So we did a, a departmental aggregate. So all modules within a department... There was a, a, a cross-module aggregate report produced for the head of department. There was an aggregate report produced for the, for the faculty. So for all departments within a faculty, they got an aggregate. And we even produced a university aggregate, an overview of all the MEQ results from across the, uh, across the university. And that was all generated automatically and pushed out to the, rel the correct people to, who needed to access those. What we also did was uh, the system will uh, generate give you access to the raw data. So we effectively, I said there was about 16,000 responses. We had that in one CSV file. We pushed that into our university data warehouse. 
which um, is then drawn on from our business intelligence systems and Tableau, um, a Tableau front end, and uh, we then made the <coughs> MEQ data available through that data warehouse system. So it's an open tap dashboard. Actually, we have quite a range of dashboards at the university. We have course metrics that reports on completion rates, NSS results, and so on. What we've done is created an additional dashboard, which is for MEQ results, um, and staff can drill, drill down. They can look, any, any member of staff can look at any module, so it's transparent, it's open. We have the 2017 net data there, we have the 2018, they can compare between the two and, and, and so on. Um, and and there, there's a sort of a, there's an example, so that's a module report in, in Tableau, 10 questions, quantitative questions listed down the left. And then uh, for 2017, uh, uh, sorry, 2016, 17, 2017, 18, data results for the two modules against um, against each other, um, and then drilling down into an individual, drilling down into an individual module, then um, uh, you can start to look at the data in in more detail. So. Basically, what it's given us is a, a, you know, a rich set of qualitative and quantitative information. We had come out of this uh, just out of 2017-18 and just over 24,000 student comments on modules. And that is probably one of the biggest qualitative data sets the university has had. And actually, we are we're working through that data. We're using that data now with course course teams. We have particular courses in the university that, um, that we're particularly focusing on to enhance, their, to enhance their performance and so on, and so we're using this data, the qualitative data, to work with them to identify issues where they need to enhance and, and, and so on. Um, importance of rapid feedback, that's been crucial, we, we think. I think we're going to reap our, what we think is we're going to reap benefits from that. Students will see the value, they see the results being discussed in class, and the impact that that's having. And then the following years, that will improve uh, completion rates. Um, we are being careful, and we have put out messages to be, uh, you know, one, have to be a little bit careful with aggregate data, and also extrapolating too much from individual module reports. So, you know, something may have happened in a, a particular module that may have skewed those results. So it is, it is looking at it in context of our other dashboards, looking at trends and so on that we're, that we're putting in, in, in the system. Um, and what, what are we doing now? So we're rolling out this year. It's already rolling out now. It's live. Um, we're rolling out 100% online. Though we've reserved the right uh, that for any difficult circumstances, we'll generate paper base where necessary. And usefully for us, our... Our standard printers across the university and multifunction devices are of good enough resolution to scan MEQ. So if, for instance, a course for whatever reason locally needed to run paper-based, they can actually scan locally um, and, and do it for us, but almost 100%. We're moving to automate the service as far as possible. So the, the key element we're reliant on the faculty is checking the date for when each <coughs> MEQ is scheduled. But we're using a user-generated field, uh, defined field within our student information system where that date, we haven't done it yet, but we hope for January we're going to do it, that date will be automatically calculated from other data within our student information system and written into that field. Faculties then can go into that, and if they need to change anything, they go in and change in our student information system. Blue then pulls that data and schedules the, syst uh, schedules the MEQ when they're due to, due to run. We're also moving, uh, well, we keep calling it deep integration. I know it's the wrong term. Uh, Blue use a different term, but I keep coming back to that. But it, it basically gives us other options, particularly in prompts to students. So having a uh, pop-up to say to a student, you haven't completed You've got an outstanding MEQ um, and other prompts. So we think, and certainly the feedback we've read from elsewhere, is they are very effective at increasing response rates. Um, and was there anything else? Yeah, the other, the other key thing that we're doing now, we're working now on new reports 
and we want to take our qualitative analysis much further. So using the qualitative data to, to identify themes, then structure the quantitative data by those themes and, and so on. So we, we've got that planned. Um, and uh, it's, it's been a cross-university uh, collaboration ourselves in, in learning and teaching, our academic registry, our IT service. Um, our strategic planning and data insight, we do a lot of work with them, they're, they're our planning department. They do all of our analytics. We're doing a lot of work at the moment, Canvas and uh, Learning Analytics, and MEQ is a sort of part of that as, as well. And, and time faculties in Vera an MEQ working group. We had our last meeting a week ago just to, to get their input on this year. And uh, sorry, that was that was sort of it, a quick run through. I couldn't see any clock, so I didn't know quite where I was with clocks. <laughs> You have three minutes left. Right. Great. <laughs> right, I'd, I'd just like to thank you. You're much more popular than I am, Dr. Tim. Thank you very much for being here.